We are not responsible for your behaviour. We believe in common sense. No, 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 no crisis, no. You're listening to News Talk on Strange But True Radio, episode 34 of 2023, with Philip Jones and produced by me, Philip Keeler, in the UK. In the UK then, an ex-conservative peer has now admitted that she lied repeatedly to the media over her involvement with a company that made millions of pounds worth of profits from UK government PPE deals during COVID times. Plus, King Charles and Queen Camilla show their funny side in a new BBC documentary. You can download News Talk on a Monday with Philip Jones and Strange News with me, Philip Keeler, every other Friday. Listen to us on all the major podcast platforms every week, including Spreaker and Apple and Google Podcasts. This is the Strange But True radio podcast. We are Independent News Talk. In the UK, an ex-conservative peer has now admitted that she lied repeatedly to the media over her involvement with a company that made millions of pounds worth of profits from UK government PPE deals during COVID. Shamed Michelle Moan told a Guardian investigation that uh, lying to the press is not a crime. She just wanted to protect her family. Moan and her husband, Doug Barrowman, were involved in PPE MedPro, which was awarded £203 million contracts in 2020. Um, Let's take a listen to part of an interview done by the BBC with Moan and her husband. Hindsight's a wonderful thing. I wasn't trying to pull the wool over anyone's eyes. And I regret and I'm sorry for not seeing straight out, yes, I am involved. My family, I've gone through hell with the media mm. over, you know, my career. Mm. And I didn't want another big hoo-ha in the press and my family to be involved in it. The, the two contracts in total came to a value of, uh, of £202 million. Pounds. And, uh, you know, MedPro made a, made a return on its investment of about... Uh, realistically, about 30%. So, about £60 million? Pounds or... Yeah, yeah, about that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, about that, yeah. Just remember, £60 million. Pounds. Uh, Phil, the National Crime Agency has now launched a criminal investigation into Moan and her husband on allegations of conspiracy to defraud, fraud by false representation and bribery, both deny uh, any wrongdoing at uh, this this PPE scandal, Phil, and and the way uh, COVID was handled is uh, obviously coming out uh, in these COVID inquiries now. About the the government should shoulder some of the blame, shouldn't they, due to this so called fast track process they had? Most definitely, um, it smacks of corruption, um, serious corruption. And uh, a lot of that is instinct. Well, these contracts are awarded by members of parliament. Mm. So the people who award the contracts are as bent as the people who receive them. Yeah. I mean, they know exactly what they're doing. They know exactly who they're giving them to. They know they created a VIP lane so that they could award contracts to their mates yeah. Instead of going through the normal procedure, there were companies that produced PPE equipment, had PPE equipment in storage, ready and available, and it was good quality gear. 
but they ignored the normal procedure to offer um, contracts out to tender because they were, it, what they, they they could override that because it was what they regard as an emergency situation. Mm. So in normal circumstances, they have to abide by a set of rules. But because it was a pandemic, they said it's an emergency, and that's why they did what they liked, so they could bypass the rules. Nonetheless, if they had people offering PPE, then it seems ridiculous that they – well, it's not ridiculous. Why else – why would they Why would they use people like Moan? Mm. What advantage would they gain by using people like Moan – to buy PPE when they had PPE readily available from known suppliers. Yeah, yeah. The only motive there could have been would be self-interest. Self-interest yeah. means profit. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. you know, it's, it's insane. The amount of money spent on PPE alone was 12 billion pounds 12 billion okay. wow and that's 200 thousand pounds per person mm. i'm sorry i just can't believe those statistics did i get the maths right <laughs> no i didn't it was 200 pounds per person 200 pounds okay yeah it's 200 pounds everybody they spent 200 pounds and everybody in the whole country on ppe i don't know about you yeah. but i had a few face masks which i didn't use yeah well, that's it. Lake must have cost a pound. Yeah. So where does all this money gone? And where is all the PPE? There are other things like personal protection equipment is used by the army. So there's a certain amount of PPE kept in storage yeah. for emergency situations when they need to pull it out. So the army have protection. So where? why didn't they... Well, the, the armed forces, sorry, and the firemen and people like that. So, why wouldn't they use the suppliers of that? Mm-hmm. And also, where is the PPE gone? Why, where is it disappeared to? Why a lot of it is alleged to be unsuitable for use? Why weren't there clauses in the contract to protect the buyer, especially for sums of? We're talking. These people are talking about. 200 million pounds so they're they're signing contracts where they're spending 140 million or over just over 140 million in the knowledge they can sell it on yeah. for 60 million profit which is Crazy. obscene yeah. because that's our taxpayers money well let's Mom go on to sorry has taken our taxpayers money she's stolen yeah 60 million her and her husband have stolen 60 million pounds there's no need you don't need to employ people to do this Hmm. you can do it yourself you can get somebody in your office and say we need to buy ppe yeah get them to buy it and do it direct you don't need to pay people like moan and her husband 60 million pounds just to buy something that doesn't work. Crazy. Crazy. But a bit like the Tory party doesn't work. Exactly. Nothing they do seems to work. Nothing. The whole system seems to have become an embarrassing farce. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Totally. I hope she gives that some of that money back. Well, I hope I hope she goes comes... to jail. <laughs> I, I, Put her in prison, I say. Be nice, you Imagine know, she, if you stole 60 million quid. She could p- pay off uh, a lot of people's electricity bills at this moment in time. That would be quite nice. Um, the good news, though, is that the government is now suing companies uh, such as PPE uh, MedPro, as we said, to get money back for allegedly supplying unsafe PPE. MedPro, uh, as a company, deny supplying unsafe PPE, and we have to say that, and are defending uh, this legal action taken against them by the government. Um, it's taken the government a long time to do this, something uh, you and I have been calling out uh, for a long, long time now, since the beginning of, well, That's the true. M- middle to the end of COVID, that they should have been using, you know, consumer law maybe? Well, it, 
the thing is, if they order, if they award contracts, and they they award contracts according to the rules and regulations, it's very difficult to uh, take people to task for that, yeah. provided they fit in with the law. Um, but what you have is an embarrassing situation for the government because of this VIP kind of award system where they put certain companies in line mm. because they knew government ministers in order for them to offer them contracts without and, and circumnavigate the normal rules and regulations and because of that if the gov when the government do it if they do it if it's successful it means that members of the government are implicated in all of any fraudulent activity mm. any misrepresentation so if you know uh, but you see the difficulty is if you buy if you spend a hundred, well, think about it. If you, if you, if the government says, right, we want you to buy two hundred million pounds worth of PPE, which to me is, I don't understand why they want to spend that much money on it anyway. Um, but even if you did, you should be, you should receive one hundred forty million pounds worth of yeah. Yeah. PPE, one hundred sixty million pounds. Oh, sorry, two hundred million pounds of PPE. If you don't receive that money. Then you don't. If you don't receive that those goods, then why would you receive the money? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If they supply something that's not fit for purpose, why would you pay for it? You'd send it back and yeah. get the money, get your money back, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah. So if they, if they, if these people are supplying un, un faulty goods, we shouldn't have to pay for them, and then they're in breach of contract. Yeah. Because any co consumerism, well, the consumer prote act, prote acts of protection, there's lots of them. They cover you, and they say if they, if you're supplied with a product which isn't fit for purpose, you don't have to pay for it, and you're given a period of time in which you can return it. I mean, the statistics are saying um, this is madness. Yeah. Yeah, uh, twelve billion spent on PPE. Okay, <laughs> they're talking about four billion. That's a third of it of this PPE that will not be used in the NHS and needs to be disposed of. Four billion. Wow. So why are they awarding contracts and paying people money for things which? aren't fit for purpose and the only thing i can think of that is profiteering one two the people paying out the money are bent mm -hmm. that's all i can think of which means that the government are bent so get rid of them yeah i mean i asked my mp who's the guy from petersfield <laughs> can't remember the name of him top of, his, top of my head i asked him to give me a list of all the ppe all the contracts and all the people who'd who'd paid for this because the um, who'd been paid for these contracts because it was a good law project found the awarding of contracts under the VIP system to be in unlawful yeah so we already know that these contracts were awarded in an unlawful manner and we also know that they were being given money and then returning goods that weren't fit for purpose so all of them should be taken to task and also the way they procure the contract so if you're saying we're going to produce we're providing you with i don't know a hundred thousand pounds worth of ppe in this case it would be I don't know, a bit more than that um and then you uh, i'm repeating myself now and then you sell sell you say here you are here's a hundred quid's worth of ppe and you go well it doesn't doesn't really fit it's not fit for purpose it looks like they've all gone oh it doesn't matter yeah yeah we'll take it anyway yeah to the tune of four billion pounds. <laughs> it's a lot of money, isn't it? Yeah, it's they're paying people who are totally incompetent. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I could do with four billion quid. I really don't see the Conservatives getting in uh, in this this next uh, general election in, in May, I think it is. That's true. No, I can't see it. But is is it in May? I think it is. Don't hold me to that, dear listener. And is Nigel it's Farage... It's normally in the it, Has Nigel Farage got his own party going and is he going to stand up for election? I don't know. I don't know. There, there was some talk of him joining the Conservative Party. I haven't seen that happen yet. There, there's some Conservatives out there who want Farage as leader of the Conservative. Can you imagine that? Leader of the Fascist. Conservative Party. 
horrific. We're going horrific. into some very strange times, aren't we? Well, a hundred years ago, there was a guy called Oswald Mosley in the early 1940s, and I think his followers were called the Black Shirts, mm -hmm. and they were right-wing fascists, and they were horrible people. But at the time, because Hitler was right-wing, and it was during the Second World War, mm. because Hitler was right-wing and, and um, a fascist, in effect, a dictator, he was said to be sympathising towards a fascist dictator, have sympathies towards and aligned with a fascist dictator in the name of Hitler. Wow. So they put him in prison in 1942. Yeah. So Oswald Mosley went to prison for his political beliefs, which obviously wouldn't be able to do that now, unfortunately. But that's kind of history repeating itself. We've got the rise of this person who is a deeply unpleasant individual, mm. I think, who's right of very far too far right to be involved in English politics mm. too extreme and very harmful and extremely dishonest I mean everything that I well because I know a fair amount about EU law when he was talking about what happens in the European Union within the law and all the other things that he argued Brexit on none of it was true mm. none of it was true I mean he didn't have anything except everything he just made it all up because he wanted to get out, I think, because because he was upset by the fact that he has no real education because he didn't go to university. <laughs> and he was surrounded by people who are doctors. Most of the Euro the members of the European Parliament have got a doctorate, especially the Germans. Yeah. yeah. And he would be, have to go out drinking with them, and they would have treated him like an ignora ignoramus because that's exactly what he is in comparison to people like that. Yeah. I'm not saying that people without a degree are, are ignorant. I'm just saying... In, in if you walk level, around with a load in that, that level, level yeah. of academia, he would be totally out of place. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's the reason why he kicked up a stink about it. And I think that he did it because he could. <laughs> and I think he's a low-life scumbag who shouldn't be allowed on TV, if you really want to know the truth. No, he's got his own show, hasn't he? That's that's the thing. All right, uh, we're going to be talking... Uh, what are we going to talk about next? We're, we're talking about King Charles and uh, Queen Camilla's new documentary, it's airing on Boxing Day. Uh, I'm actually quite excited to see this. I'll be watching it. Uh, Tom, my other half, is not so. He doesn't doesn't really like the king. Apparently, he just just doesn't doesn't warm to him. Every time I mention it, he says no. No, I'm not watching that. You can watch in the bedroom or whatever. But anyway, I'll be watching it. Thanks, thanks, Thomas. Uh, this is News Talk on Strange but True Radio with him over there, Philip Jones, and me over here, Philip Keeler broadcasting uh, for a change both from the UK back after this Yeah. 
and a dark pub Still sometimes I wonder if you're near or off yonder Though I couldn't tell you why But wherever Listening to a nice little Christmas tune, I was on Twitter about to you know, get the announcement. Like we we normally do announcements saying hello to all our new Twitter fans. I can tell you we've got a few new Twitter fans. However, maybe fifty uh, percent of them uh, are well. Last week we had Russian nude uh, cam girls or bots uh, targeting us. It looks like this week. We've had Chinese uh, Russian cam girls uh, trying to target us. So I, I'm, I've just spent four minutes of my life, which I'll never sadly get back, uh, fighting uh, the bots and the cam girls on Twitter. So apologies. Um, I will read out some new real followers uh, next time. Uh, get the latest breaking news on your phone on Twitter. Add us using our handle at StrangeBTR. Um, and there is a lot of one, a lot of stuff on our feed, actually. Uh, lots of breaking news, lots of um, lots of political stuff. We sometimes, I sometimes retweet uh, what about what our followers uh, are saying, and that's always of interest to us. So uh, get in touch with us on Twitter at Strange BTR. Uh, a really old-fashioned way to get in touch with us still, and we do occasionally get emails. Studio at Strange But True Radio dot com I've just seen uh, Phil on the webcam he's uh, are you munching quality streets what you got there uh, it was um, brownies oh brownies we won't ask him what's uh, inside the brownies. Chocolate, of course. <laughs> chocolate. Just chocolate. In the UK then, King Charles and uh, Queen Camilla show their funnier side in a new television documentary. Uh, the BBC show, which is out on Boxing Day, shows behind-the-scenes footage of last year's coronation. I'm extremely excited about watching this, curling up, with a fire and the TV on, a hot chocolate with some whiskey or brand whiskey. Is it whiskey? Yeah, whiskey in it. Um, Charles has always um, been seen as a more serious faced royal, uh, but you see him laughing apparently and genuinely 
having fun. I don't think we're going to see the moment or when he had that uh, that pen outburst with a pen leaking all over his hand. Do you remember that? That was uh, that was it a year and a half ago, I think. Um, Phil, you and I have to wait until Boxing Day, of course, to see this. So we've had no sneak previews. Are you looking forward to seeing this as well? Um, if I'm around, yeah, I'll be, it'll be quite interesting. I quite like Charles. Yeah. I yeah. really like his tie. You like his tie? <laughs> yeah, I like, so that was, I like the that fact. was, that was from COP, uh, the latest COP, uh, meeting, wasn't it? Yeah. Solidarity with the Greeks. Yeah. I mean, these are friends of ours and Sunak snubbed them. I think that's, un- un- it's just not forgivable. Yeah. It's totally unforgivable. The Greek guy, the Greek prime minister comes over here and, um, that squirmy little man who's, uh, Weasley. <laughs> Prime Weasley Minister. Weasley little man. Weasley little Prime Minister. Creepy little... Weasley party. Person. Weasley, yeah. Up to all sorts of um, stuff, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. Um, he, and then he snubbed the Greek Prime Minister. I think it's just disgraceful. It's not part of... He's obviously not... He's not behaving in a proper way at all. Mm. It's not statesman. Like, you don't do that to people who are friends. And, of course, Charles is half Greek. Yeah. In it, I think. <clears> and... Um, because his member, the, his father was a member of the Greek royal family. He's born in Corfu, and he made people say, "Oh, maybe he's showing solidarity with that." But he's showing solidarity with the Greeks. He's saying, "Up yours to Sunak," I think, <laughs> which I like very much. And um, you know, I like the fact he's prepared to speak out about COP28. I think they they didn't want him to go when he was first co- um, king. Yeah. They didn't want him to go to speak about it, but he's there now. But well, it is weird. I mean, it's the I whole thing about the climate warming's all gone a bit weird now. Queen Elizabeth II, I don't think, would have done that. But they um, they seem to allow Charles, and I think it's great to be able to speak about things because he's he's been into the like um, climate change and farming and all sorts of things before he was king. So it's nice exactly. that we allow him yeah. or the government or whoever it is the. The, the people in charge of the monarchy, they allow him to do it. I'd rather he spoke on behalf of the people of this country than Sunak mm. or any of the Tories for that matter. Mm. I mean, I, I would like him, I'd be quite happy for him to take control of the government and have a military coup. Mm. I'd, I wouldn't mind because everything is, is so unpleasant now. It's constant barrage of lies oh, there's a sound effect and, diso- and um, dishonesty it's just i would be you know i wouldn't mind if he just said actually if that's enough because hypothetically it, it then let's let's just go into that let's go into hold, that. hold on hold on the whole of societies begins to break down yeah. once the government is obviously corrupt yeah, yeah. we all know there's governments that are corrupt but the more corrupt they become the more likely we are we're heading towards a social revolution it was corruption and greed of the government that brought down the french monarchy in 1790 there you go apologies uh dear listener i i I was blaming uh phil for that uh email sound effect that was actually mine for a change so I, i i i take that back um phil hypothetically then right Mm-hmm. And this is very out of the box thinking, but we like that on this show. Could Charles say, "Right, Conservative government, get out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be in charge um, for the next, however long it is, until the general elect." Can he do that? <laughs> it's re- <laughs> he could. <laughs> I don't know what the constitution, constitutional powers are. Yeah. But I wouldn't be surprised if there's an ancient law somewhere which he says in the event that there's no gov- the government falls to pieces, yeah. then he ha- he can step in. I bet there's a clause somewhere, but we haven't got a written constitution. We should write to him. So we should write to yeah, him. Yeah, we should. I felt like it. Write to Prince Charles and say hello. You know, I'm re- we're really fed up with this dishonesty. Can you just take over for a while until such time as we can sort it out? Because it's dreadful. I mean. It's four hundred billion pounds. Four hundred billion pounds was spent on during the, during the pandemic, and mm. a lot of that's just evaporated into thin air. Mm. They're talking about a hundred billion pounds has disappeared. That's what. That's a rough estimate, you know. 
so that is theft from the British people, and Charles is more honourable, I'd say, than any of the other people in government. Yeah, yeah. Pretty much all of them. Because he doesn't have, he's not elected, no. he doesn't have to say things for effect, because his position doesn't change whatever he says. Whereas a lot of people like, say, Starmer is guilty of saying that he thinks that some of the things that Thatcher did were very good. Yeah. He's saying that to get votes. Whether yeah. he's true or not, we don't know. But he's saying it to get votes. Yeah. So he's also trying to capture the working classes in England by saying that we're not going to rejoin the EU, which is fallacious as far as I'm concerned. I think that he should be um, saying we should join the single market. We should definitely join the single market. It's foolish not to. Mm. I mean, we should start making moves to become full members of the EU again, as far as I'm concerned, because that would be best for the British people. Yeah. But, you know, I'm going off now on do, a tangent. Do you think Charles, Basically, though, yeah. do you think Charles, though, has, has made a, a good job of being king in his first year? Well, he hasn't done a lot that I'm aware of, but yeah. <laughs> I quite like him. I just think he's all right, you know. As I said, I like the fact that he's prepared to speak out over climate change and things yeah, yeah. like that. Yeah. Although I think that climate change is becoming less and like less likely to be man-made. Mm. Well, I think it's, I think we're being lied to, like you wouldn't believe. And I told you earlier how mm. um, at the moment it's point oh four percent of. Um, the Earth's atmosphere is made up of carbon dioxide. If it reaches 0.02%, that means all the plants die. Mm. So really, we need more. When it, one time it was 0.07% was um, carbon dioxide, and the Earth was everything was fine. It wasn't a problem. Mm. So they get they're moving towards becoming dangerously low. They also tell us that 90% of carbon dioxide is man-made, which is absolute rubbish, because if 90% of carbon dioxide was man-made and we all went carbon nu carbon neutral that's my phone sorry um if we all went carbon neutral it means all the plants would die yeah 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 so someone isn't telling us the truth oh i don't know about that but um so i just want to talk about camilla our international audience so obviously british people will will know this uh, camilla really was quite hated 10 20 years ago uh, taking over from uh, you know diana um and he was obviously a, a love in she was lo a love interest with with charles and diana at the same time it was all got a bit ugly obviously um do do you think that the passing of time has helped and camilla camilla's camilla's really changed her persona hasn't she and and what we think of her I don't know if she's changed her persona, but what we know of her is more favourable than it was in the past, and she does seem to be quite amusing. Yeah. I think she has got quite a good sense of humour, as has her husband. Mm. Um, based, I think they, they were childhood... Well, she was the love of his life, and yeah. still is, no doubt. Yeah. So there must be something about her. And they do seem they do actually seem to be quite you know well they are well suited and hopefully she becomes more pop more and more popular. I think that yeah. there was a lot of resentment directed towards her because of um, what happened with Lady Diana Spencer. Yeah, and so it's very you know that because Lady Princess Diana was probably one of the most famous woman on the planet, I would imagine, yeah. and so. It's very difficult to follow an act like that, and you, you know how could you be as popular as that? So, yeah, pretty, pretty, it's very, pretty impossible to do that. But you know, as a queen, I think she's fine. Yeah, yeah, she's great. I do, I do, and I don't. I think she's more re be probably more regal than Princess Diana because I don't think Princess Diana should have given the interviews that she did. <laughs> I think she was talking too much about her personal life, and that's not what royalty should be doing. No, no, we don't need to know. I, I don't want to know. I just want them. No. I, I want them to be figureheads. Look at what Prince Harry's done with that other woman, Mengel Markle, Mengel Markle, Mengel, Meg Megan Markle. Yeah, Mengel, Mengel, <laughs> Megan, Mengels, Mengels. She was in the <laughs> probably related to those German war criminals. I would mm. imagine. Anyway, yeah, horrible, horrible, horrible. So um, this is our last show really for for Christmas because um, I don't really want to be doing a Christmas Day show. I might cobble together some best bits actually, but uh, I think it would be uh, both our worst nightmares having to do a show on Christmas Day facing each other on a webcam. 
Uh, so, uh, <laughs> what, what are you, what are you doing on Christmas Day? I'm not very, nothing much. Nothing. You going to church? No. I watch the King's speech. You going to mid? Are you going to mass on New Year, uh, Christmas Eve? Maybe. See, there's a rather nice pub across the road, and they're going to stay up late on Christmas Eve, and then. So you're going out for a few pints. Then, then yeah, and then Tom and I. Uh, the dog is on holiday at my parents. Tom, Tom and I will go to the pub and then we'll go to the church at half past 11 and uh-huh. uh, sing some carols. But we'll have to sit in the back row because I'll be laughing at him and he'll be laughing at me. But it will be, yeah, very Christmassy. That sounds great. Yeah. Sounds like you're going to have a really good time. But I don't really drink these days, you see. No. no. I'm practically teetotal. I don't either. No, nothing, nothing. You do. You had a couple of pints yesterday, didn't you? Yeah, I had uh, three pints, uh, some yeah. IPA. I was in London looking at the Christmas yeah. lights. It's very nice. There you go, see, yeah. Had a Chinese meal, proper Chinese dumplings and... Um... Oh, no, actually, it wasn't Chinese. It was a Chinese... It was Chinese, but I actually had pad thai. Oh, that's thai. Which is thai. But there yeah. was definitely Chinese on the menu as well, so... Oh, good. Yeah. There is a restaurant lovely. in there's a restaurant, there was a restaurant, if it still is, there's a big tall restaurant about three stories, I believe, in Soho, where the staff are renowned for being rude to everyone. Because I went in there uh, yeah. uh, years ago and they just started insulting me and were not being they're just being offhand, completely really rude. Like, what do you want? That's an American that's diner like, uh, type thing, isn't it? No, I don't think so. No. Yeah. No, no, I don't think so. It was, I think it's a three, st- a three-story ch- restaurant in Chinatown on yeah. the corner. Oh right. And I think the staff are renowned for being rude to everybody who comes in. Oh wow. Because I was quite taken aback, thinking, "What are we doing?" And they were going, "Well, it's okay because it's normal here." <laughs> so it's quite funny, really, you know. Oh, I don't. I don't think I could stand that. I like. Uh, it was funny. I like. I like nice. Service, service, and uh, anyway, that's it for this edition of Strange But True Radio. We are news talk for a mixed up generation with Philip Jones and me, Philip Keeler. Join us for a new podcast available to download every Monday except Christmas Day because no one wants to do that, do they? We are not responsible for your behaviour. We believe in common sense. Happy Christmas. No, 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 no crisis, no.